Hello all, good morning, Travis Dampier of Travis Dampier Ministries, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Saturday, uh, April 3rd, um, the day before Easter, even though Easter is a pagan holiday, you know, keep in mind that they celebrate, you know, this demonic god is like East Star and they're, and they're celebrating. Um, so it is a satanic, you know I mean, holiday. Um, but, you know, what um, I like to look at it as um, is the Gentile ce celebration of Jesus Christ's resurrection, his death on the cross, and then resurrection. Because remember, Israel's not doing that. They're celebrating Passover right now. So they're tied in the days of the Old you know, in Testament. And then you have the Gentiles focusing on the New Testament, um, even though all of us are supposed to be focused on the entire word of God. So the Old and New. You know what I mean? You you must know that Jesus Christ is God. In the beginning, the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is the most important line of scripture ever. Then Jesus continued to say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because he's telling you who he is in his fullness. So God has three ways that he can operate. So he operates in the heavens, sitting on his throne in his fullness. He operates with man, with Jesus being the son of man. So that way we can actually see God. We can commune with God. He can sit with us, dine with us. Um, we can't see his face. He's, it's too powerful. We'll die even in heaven. We can't see his face in his fullness. Then you have the spirit of God, which can live in us. This is what I saw in a dream and a vision when God was telling me who he was. He was giving me insight. He said, I will give you the secret things, those that are close to him. So um, he showed, I just saw a big ball of light and I saw him come out of this big ball of light. And, the, and, and he says, that's, that's how I came to be. That's how Jesus Christ, the son of man, came to be. So he came out of his fullness. So God literally ripped a piece of his self off of him and like that. You know what I mean? And now what he's done is taken a piece of himself again and, and put it in us. You know what I mean? So we are a walking representation of the word of God. We're a piece of him. I mean, that's why it's so important to be holy because God cannot have unrighteousness and filth, you know, within his own body. It would be the same thing as having a cancerous cell in your body. If you knew you had a cancerous cell, you would have to extract it out else the rest of your cells would get polluted. It's the same thing that the Lord um, discussed um, when he was talking about, you know, the, the bread and the leaven. He said, if, if you... Um, what did he say? If you get the leaven and the bread, then it can contaminate the whole thing. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's really, really important um, that you understand um, you know, what what your uh, uh, job is here on earth. You know, when you're thinking about um, being saved and, and being tied to the Lord, it is being obedient so that way he can instruct you which way you should go. So you can actually be the true body of Christ. When he makes a command, you're the pinky and the pinky does what the head tells it to do. <clears throat> so that way his objectives can get be done on earth. That's why we are called the body, because the body needs to make moves still, you know, even though Jesus Christ is risen again. You know what I mean? Then you need to be standing in repentance. Obedience is if the Holy Spirit tells you, hey, something's not right. You need to not do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and that is, you know, staying in repentance with obedience. You know what I mean? And then, of course, of course. When somebody asks you, um, we are not we're not all called to be pastors and ministers and all those things. However, when the time is right, you are supposed to be a walking example and a light. And when somebody asks you, where does your hope come from? You better be able to tell it. Hallelujah. That's what it's all about. You get God using you at the times he needs to. And, and that's all he expects. His burden is easy. His yoke is light. I mean, he's a loving, loving God. And he's done so much for me in my life. And those that really know him, they know that he will always provide a way of escape in time of trouble because he's done it for me many, many times. Hallelujah. He's a right on time God. Okay. Let's get to um, what's taking place uh, yesterday. We're going to talk more about 
uh, today and tomorrow because it's serious, serious high rapture watch time. Um, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So uh, here we go. Hopefully it'll focus. All right. It'll give you the picture. Uh, Pope Francis calls for new world order for post-pandemic world. <laughs> Pope famous. Pope Francis reportedly called for a new world order for a post-pandemic world in a book set to come out on Tuesday in Rome. According to Breitbart, the head of the Catholic Church insists for the establishment of a new world order after the pandemic because things will never be the same after that. Oh, indeed, they're not. They're not. So um, you, you have um, the Great Reset, you know what I mean, coming uh, I don't know if they had the meeting yet. They're probably already, you know, deciding what they're going to be doing. But the world's going to change. Um, you got the vaccine passports rolling out. <clears throat> you already know what's coming. You know what I mean? It, it's bottom line. It's um, uh, it's a fight for a normal that will never happen again. That's literally how the next seven years are going to be lived. People are going to be fighting for normal. There's going to be asteroids coming. There's going to be um, the demonic realm, you know, uh, literally showing themselves. So people are going to say there's aliens walking around. People are going to be terrified, you know, but they're going to still be fighting for normal for every ounce they get. Um, but don't get me wrong. There will be people vaccinated. So they're going to keep teasing you with normal with the carrot. People will be going to Disneyland and, and little things um, before you know, the Lord destroys a lot of these things. Um, else they would have a chance to repent because it says even after the first three and a half years with all kinds of seals and trumpets are blown and all kinds of dead um, dead uh, people occur like it's all kinds of death massive massive losses of death dude we're eight billion dollar eight billion uh, we have eight billion people on the planet and the Lord says one fourth is going to be destroyed, dude. Then another, like, third. And I mean, it's great when you think about that, dude. You're talking a billion people. You know what I mean? And there's going to be more, you know what I mean, that die. Um, and it says after three and a half years, because God gives a break um, before the last, uh, the before the seventh or, or the, the sixth and seventh trumpet or something like that. You know, there's a break. It says there's a silence. And he allows time to see if people repent. And it says they still wouldn't repent. They still wanted to go and sin and do all their stuff. So it's it's unbelievable, dude. Like, I, I don't know. People are stuck in their ways. And even to death, people are like, you know what? I don't care. I don't care about your God. I don't care. Like, I'm going to live my life. I want to spend my money. I'm going to save my money. I, I just want to look at my money. Um, it's a very sick disease, I tell you. Um, there was two. There was two uh, large earthquakes that hit the Cascadia subduction zone. That's uh, right here near Eureka. Um, and it was uh, uh, like a 4.4 a and a 4.6. Um, and I remember I told you the day before there was another 4.4 uh, um, <clears throat> in that exact area. So um, there's definitely a swarm forming there, more birth pain warnings. Um, all of these areas where you're starting to see these warnings that the Lord is showing this is what's what's this is what he's trying to tell you. Once the rapture hits, all these areas where there's been swarms, of earthquakes on top of volcanoes, and and um and and major um um suspicious type of of, of warnings, ominous looking signs. This is what's gonna occur. These are the areas where you're gonna see these these major eruptions and major earthquakes and splitting of the states and, and splitting of the United States are gonna occur. You're gonna you're gonna see this stuff in these areas. So if you've been in these areas, the rapture takes place. Do you need to get up and get out immediately? Um, as soon as we go up, judgment comes down. You know what I mean? But we don't know if it's gonna hit every single area at the same time. It could, uh, but we don't know. But you know where the the warnings have been, so I I, I would run from those areas. Let's see what else we got. See if this will focus in. It's starting to. There we go. All right. Uh, British, French, U.S. commands prepare for Warfighter Twenty One Four exercise. Uh, Warfighter Twenty One Four, a corpse level combat exercise starting April six, will involve U.S., French, and British troops. A U.S. Army press release said this week, the 10-day exercise will involve a simulation of a battle with U.S., U.K., 
and French Army Tactical Divisions with thousands of troops and support personnel participating at multiple installations, including Fort Hood, Texas, Fort Bliss, Texas, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and Gravenwar, Germany. Once again, you see the war preparations going underway. You see the allies on the west, and you see the allies, you know what I mean, on the east. They're all uh, just forming together, and they're not just talking about it. They're doing war exercises. They know what's coming. So, dude, this this is just clear evidence signs of where we are, and things are about to kick off. Like, uh, this is what I keep telling people. Like, look, the, the rapture can't be much longer. Else we're going to be here for all these wars, and this is not what the Lord intends for his people. You know what I mean? So the bride is going to be gone. And I keep saying the bride. I don't say, you know, you hear me correct myself when I just say Christians, because there's a lot of lukewarm Christians that aren't going. The Lord said, I will spit you out of my mouth. You cannot have one foot in the world and one foot, you know what I mean, with him. You can't. You, you, you can't love God and mammon. You can't. And, it, and also what that really means, you can't love God in the world. You can't. You know, you'll love one to hate the other. You, you, just, you just can't. You know what I mean? So um, that's why he said, you know, those that hate the world. Because, you know, once you're you're really tied in, trust me, I was lukewarm for the past, goodness, couple of years, waiting for the Lord to get me back hot again. And I was praying, like, Lord, um, I know I'm not hot. I haven't been hot since like 2002. <clears throat> when I first became a Christian, Lord, I was eager to get in his work. I was eager to wake up the next day and see what God would use me for. I was eager to minister, you know, when I saw somebody in need. And um, I, the world just pulled me in little by little. And I had one foot in the world, one foot out of it. Uh, and thank God he brought me back, you know what I mean? And now I'm hot again. Um, so thankful for that. Um, but there's a key difference, I tell you. Uh, let's see if this will focus. You can some of it. There we go. Uh, the CDC says fully vaccinated people can safely travel in the U.S. Oh, I'm sure they can. Yes. Um, and you notice that this is happening right before the vaccine passports are released. So all it, this is, it, it's just very simple writing on the wall. All they're going to do. So now you got the CDC saying, okay, fully va vaccinated people, check. Now they'll roll out the vaccine passports. They will push it on the CDC and say, hey, we're not trying to, you know, force any uh, body that doesn't have the vaccine, you know, to, to not fly. I mean, this is this is the CDC's recommendation. We're just trying to keep people safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that, that's what they're going to do. And, uh, you know, basically, bottom line, you don't, you're not vaccinated. You ain't flying. You ain't traveling. You, they're going to start putting the commercials on TV, showing people enjoying fun at Disneyland, because Disneyland is going to soon say, you know what, if you, you're not vaccinated, you can't come in. And then they're going to offer the nugget, if you're vaccinated, you no longer have to wear a mask. That's the next one. If you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. So they're going to keep doing little freedoms, d dangling the carrot little by little, uh, and just getting more and more and more in, you know what I mean, to take the jab. I'm telling you, it, it is a very dangerous, dangerous thing um, that, that you're doing if you go and do that and, and have no idea what they're doing to you. Um, very dangerous, man. It's the mark indeed. Yeah, indeed. Okay. All right, so uh, Russia's Ukraine actions escalate again, sparking U.S. anger. Uh, Kirby said the Rus Russian escalations include violations of a July 2020 ceasefire brokered by the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe that led to the deaths of four Ukrainian soldiers in the eastern part of the country on March 26 and the wounding of two others. The Ukrainian military said the four were killed in a mortar attack it blamed on Russian troops. Um, Russia's trying to deny it. So Russia's playing these games, trying to deny they're doing anything to Ukraine. Ukraine said, no, 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 no. They're over here trying to kill us, dude. And, and they're trying to take over again. So you got China on one side trying to take over Taiwan and taking over all these uh, uh, different areas of the sea. Even um, Japan's getting pissed off and, and, and Philippines. They are literally taking over territory. And Russia's trying to take over territory. They know what time it is. They, they're working on these um, economical agreements so that way they can own all of the finances. They're trying to push the U.S. dollar out. I, I shared that with you a week or two back. Um, 
that Russia has so many sanctions on them, so does Iran, so does China, that they go, you know, we need to get rid of the U.S. dollar so this stuff doesn't bother us anymore. Um, so they, they are aggressively doing everything they can to survive what they know is here for a long time. COVID is not going anywhere, and there are going to be more plagues and pestilence, says the Lord, that's coming. All right. So uh, let's see if we can get this focus here. All right, you, you got to go take a look at that Twitter feed. If you're a CNN watcher, you'll see exactly what they're talking about. But they are point blank telling you that they are dangling a carrot in front of you. They're dangling freedom in front of you. And this person on here that's speaking, Dr. Lena Wynn, a public health professor, literally says in there, she goes, how are we, she said, you know, there's states opening 100%. They're not requiring people to get vaccinated. How are we supposed to continue to vaccinate them? She's looking at people like sheep. She goes, how are we supposed to continue to vaccinate these people? You know what I mean? If we don't have a carrot to dangle in front of them. Unbelievable, dude. Unbelievable. That should make you want to run. That should make you want to run. Hearing stuff like that. They're dangling a carrot to give you something. You have no idea what you're taking, but I'll tell you what you're taking. You know what I mean? They're, they're sitting over here. They're removing the God gene from you. You know what I mean? It's coming out, right? They're removing the God gene. They're inserting demonic DNA. They're inserting tons of microchips, you know what I mean, in you as well. So you'll be tied to 5G and I don't know what else they have the ability to do to you once you take it. I don't know. But we did have a sister in Christ share a dream. You know, I'm going to talk about it um, shortly. But she did share a dream that there's some kind of lever that they'll be able to push. And when that happens, I don't know if it's mind control. I don't know what they'll be able to do. But they will be able to adjust some things or even send electricity volts or something in you. To control you or have you do a thing or wipe you out. I don't know. I don't know. But it doesn't sound good. <laughs> Either way. It does not sound good. Continue to warn your families. Continue to warn your friends. All That's all you can do. That's all you can do. If, if they choose to do it on their own despite the warnings. This is what used to happen You know, with the prophets of old. They warned, they warned, they warned. And people kept doing what they wanted to do anyway. Just like in the days of Noah. You know what I mean? Uh, Noah was sitting over building the ark. They were making fun of him because he was preparing for what was coming, hallelujah, you know, so he was in prep, you know what I mean, for what was coming, and they were marrying, drinking, meaning they were doing the same thing, laughing at him, they were like, dude, you're stupid, we're living the dream, and there is no God coming to do anything to us, you know what I mean, just, you just go and do your stupid stuff, you know what I mean, while we sit over here and just live our lives, that's the same exact thing that we're seeing today, same exact thing we're seeing today, there's many of us prepared, well, <laughs> There's not a lot. Let me take that back. I'm talking about the watchmen. There's many of us preparing and those that, you know, are 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 um watching and, 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 and pushing as well. But there's many, many asleep. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but there's definitely many asleep and um it, it's a very, very sad time. But right now is the time to choose which side that you'll be on. Okay. Uh let me Slow this in there, will it, will it, there we go, all right, um, this uh, was a vision um, from a, I think it was a sister in Christ, um, and she got March 4th about regarding the Suez Canal, you know, obviously, you know, this was a clear sign of the exodus, you know what I mean, of, of God, um, the, the Red Sea was blocked and God opened it up freed the Red Sea. I talked to you about that last week. I said, dude, this is clear evidence sign. So, um, but with the other clear thing was, you know, with, is Nissan 21, because the day it happened was Nissan 21. And that is going into the third and fourth today. Nissan 21, dude, I am so excited. We're talking super high rapture watch today and tomorrow. And not only that, so you have Passover is going to be the seventh day, um, and the Lord said, make sure that this, the first day and the seventh day is holy. So we got that as well that hits today into tomorrow. Then what we have, we have where Passover meets Easter. So we have, like I said, we have the Israel celebration meeting the Gentile ce celebration landing at the exact same time as well. 
this is no coincidence. This is no coincidence. So this is definitely super duper high rapture watch weekend. And um, we stand and wait. We, we stand and wait and watch. That's all we can do. And if it doesn't go down today, Lord willing, it does. But if it doesn't, we keep pushing. We stay away from the jab. And we keep doing our thing, trying to bring people in to warn them. That's it. It's all you got to do in the interim. God will give you favor. You know what I mean? He'll make sure your bills are paid. He'll make sure, you know what I mean, your family's taken care of. He'll make sure, you know what I mean, that, that you're eating steak, lobster, all that good stuff, whatever you want while you're here. You, you can't you can't lose. You do the work of the Lord. He will ensure, do that all these things you are given over to you. Seek ye first the kingdom. All these things. Not a few, all of them. So, can't lose, can't lose. Okay, here goes another one. Uh, if, you, if it zooms up, there you go. Um, this is what I was just referring to. Um, Sister in Christ had a dream um, back in February 2020 uh, about the jab. And what the dream was, was that there was some lever. And, dude, everybody that did the jab, once they pushed the button or did this lever, something nasty happened. She said she didn't know what happened to it. She said it just... She knew in the dream something bad was going to happen. So um, we don't know. We honestly don't know, but but we see it clearly. We, we definitely see it clearly. All right. If that zooms up well. Um, anyone? Uh, 6.4 earthquake hits near Antarctica in the South Atlantic Ocean. So the ring of fire is on this side. You got another circular like kind of form, and now I don't. Maybe they call that a, a ring of fire as well, but it looks just like the normal ring of fire environment, and uh, it hit at the bottom on the other side in, near the South Atlantic Ocean, uh, near Antarctica. So the Lord definitely is warning. Um, I mean, there's going to be earthquakes, volcanoes erupting where people didn't even think they were, but the Lord created all these things. He knows exactly where they are. There might even be new volcanoes formed. Amen. Okay, and uh, where are we other than that? Uh, oh, if you take a look at this one. See if you zoom in. There we go. Um, this is a really, really um, good video. It talks about, you know, Passover rapture. So it talks about this weekend. You know what I mean? What's coming. But then it talks about a second Passover. If you go read Numbers 9, 1 through 14, um, the the first year after um, the, the Passover occurred, there were some unclean um, Israelites that wanted to celebrate Passover. It must have been a big bunch of them. And they couldn't celebrate Passover because they were unclean. They were ceremonially unclean during that time. So they went to the Lord and they said, hey, but well, they went to Moses and they said, hey, you know, what are we supposed to do? Because we want to celebrate Passover, but but we can't because we're ceremonial, we're, we're unclean. So then Moses went to the Lord and the Lord told them, go celebrate the next month on the 14th. This will be the second Passover. So smell, that's very interesting. That came directly from God. And God doesn't just throw random stuff just to do it. So I'm sure he'll use it. Well, it was interesting um, after. So obviously people celebrate the first Passover that were clean. And then there was a second Passover, which it gave time for those that um, weren't clean to be to get clean. You know what I mean? And then once they were clean, you know, then they went. So I, I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? Honestly, I really don't know. You know, maybe there's going to be certain saints that they get raptured up. And then, you know, maybe um, a month later, you know, more. I don't I don't know. Like, honestly, I don't know, but that showed me in scripture, though, that there is two pass. I don't want to say two Passover events, but there's two Passover celebrations that the Lord gave over. So and he and he doesn't use stuff for nothing. So um, we'll see. We'll see how that's used. Um, but if if you're a Christian, and you get raptured up. I would really look at the second month on the 14th. Read, read the numbers nine and you'll see what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? So if we go up today, tomorrow and you're lukewarm and you didn't go, then I would be trying to get clean, stand in repentance and then wait the next one and see what happens. You know what I mean? Um, that's all I can tell you. Okay. We're 24 minutes. Let me get to the verse of the day. This is Hebrews 12, two Hebrews 12, two. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus the champion who initiates and perfects our faith, hallelujah, 
Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Hallelujah. And this is how we stand. Doesn't matter if, if we're shamed. Doesn't matter if people call us stupid. Doesn't matter, you know what I mean, if, if your job or whomever keeps looking at you and saying, oh, you're supposed to hide this Christian stuff. You're not supposed to be telling everybody you're a Christian and telling people to repent. You know what I mean? Get this guy out of here. Let's shut him down. He's telling me I'm a sinner. You know, this scum. You know what I mean? So we're, we're being attacked from the world, from normal. People don't want to see that. People don't want to see um, the Lord presented in public. They don't. They, they want you to hide it. They want you to keep it reserved. That's not what God demonstrated. He said, you are the lamp. You are the light of the world. You know what I mean? You're, 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 a, you're a lamp to help guide people home. You know what I mean? So you you need to be a lampstand and you need to continue to shine your light, which is God, Jesus Christ living within you, that others might glorify the Father in heaven when they see the good works coming from you. And that you stand you stood still, knowing our blessed hope in the future to be with Jesus Christ and rule and reign with him in heaven. And we stand firm in that for eternal life. Hallelujah. Okay, people, I'm going to give you your time back. Super duper high rapture watch day into tomorrow. So we are, man, today and tomorrow, super high rapture watch. God bless you and yours, people. Shalom. Love y'all. Jesus Christ surely loves you dearly. Have a good one. Later.